So I know I just shared with the children that Pentecost is often considered the birthday of the church, and that is an easy connection to make. In fact, I've worshipped in places where the highlight of coffee hour on Pentecost is a birthday cake, decked out with red sprinkles and icing, often made by my mom, considering dad was the pastor. (laughs) And why wouldn't we think of Pentecost in this way? It was the first time that many Jewish people from outside the region that Jesus had traversed had heard the good news, had heard the stories of Jesus. This is certainly a thing that is worth celebrating. But if we let ourselves get caught up in the happy birthday excitement of it all, we may miss out on another beautiful and amazing thing that happened that day. God's family got bigger. When the Holy Spirit gave the disciples the ability to speak in the native tongues of all the people gathered, they responded. They took to the street proclaiming God's love for the world. Peter the disciple that Jesus had once called the rock on which I will build my church, gives what is essentially the first Christian sermon, proclaiming that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And if we continue reading past verse 21, we find that God's promise is found in the Hebrew Scriptures and completed in the life of Jesus is interpreted by Peter to be for everyone the Lord God calls to him. And that that day, about 3,000 people joined the church, devoting themselves to the teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And indeed, when Peter said everyone, Peter meant Everyone, sons and daughters, old and young, slaves and free are all invited into God's family that day. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, Peter says, quoting from the prophet Joel in the Hebrew scriptures. Your young shall see visions, your old shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. This was radical thinking, both when Joel wrote it and when Peter declared it on that day of Pentecost. Especially controversial for the time period would have been the inclusion of children and enslaved people. But God's hospitality is a radical hospitality, and at times, a controversial hospitality. On that Pentecost and in the centuries since, God has been pulling up more and more chairs, adding more seats to the table. No one is too young, too poor, too queer, too disabled, too ill, too neurodivergent, too anything for God. The Holy Spirit, God's spirit and the gifts that she brings are for all people who would receive her. Occasionally, God will anoint big dreamers who use their lives and their words to engage a national or even international audience as they share their vision and renew hope in the human community. Perhaps people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his I Have a Dream speech come to mind. Or maybe you think of Greta Thunberg or Malala Yousafzai. But God also anoints ordinary people, people like you, people like me. We too have visions and we also dream dreams. We too have the power of the Holy Spirit within us, leading us to move the church and our community ever closer to the Lord's great and glorious day. 
And we're doing it right now. When we educate ourselves about God and about the world around us through favorite programs like the Issues Class or new and reimagined programs like Tuesday's Kick Club, Kids in Christ Club from the program year or this summer's Band Book Club for youth and their parents. When we serve God and God's people on mission trips to places like the Dominican Republic or closer to home projects in Hershey, Hummelstown, Palmyra, Harrisburg. When we, may, when we work towards making our church a welcoming and hospitable place through the dedication of committees and groups like the Membership and Involvement Committee and the Inclusion Team. When we give financial support to organizations like Love, Inc., Camp Chrisland, and the Joshua Group. These are just some of the ways that the Holy Spirit is working through Derry Presbyterian Church. The Holy Spirit works in so many ways. And recently, with our youth, the Holy Spirit has been working through the power of art. During our creative ministry workshop, the youth have been creating and preparing uh, a piece of art that is shown this morning, uh, both up at the front of the sanctuary and on the cover of your bulletin. There are actually two different bulletin covers. You gotta collect a whole set. <laughs> the art was inspired by the Pentecost story. The art was inspired by God's table getting bigger and bigger and more seats being added. The art was also inspired by a song called The Commission by a band called Cain. And the song, the chorus repeats over and over, go tell the world about me. And that is what that first Christian Pentecost really kicked off. There's also a line in the song that really stuck out to me. And it's God singing or Jesus singing to the listener, you have a purpose and I have a plan. And that's what all of this really is. We are given a purpose by God and the ability to enact that purpose through the Holy Spirit. So what dreams and what visions has God given you? How is the Holy Spirit moving in your life? Or if you're struggling to see that, how is the Holy Spirit moving in those around you? Sometimes it's easier to see in other people than it is in ourselves. The Pentecost story reminds us of God's call on our lives to love one another. When we, like the disciples, let the Holy Spirit work through us, we can't help but proclaim God's word share God's love, and practice God's justice. As Peter proclaims, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is an invitation, and it is a welcome spoken in love to all who might hear it. Amen.